Hello there and welcome to Walker on the Wild Side. My name is Ben Walker and today I am talking about human evolution. Now we started our evolution many, many millions of years ago, but we're going to start focusing on when we started to diverge from the great apes, you know, gorillas, chimpanzees, all that kind of stuff. Now this happened about 8 million years ago, as you can probably tell from my wonderful uh, family tree here. So 8 million years ago is when we first started to step break. And it's been a very long way, as you can see, from this blue line going all the way down to Homo sapien at the bottom. So I'm just going to briefly follow through this tree down here and then talk a little bit about human evolution from then on out. So hopefully you stick around to watch. So if you look all the way back here, we don't actually know which is our shared ancestor with the great apes. So the best I can do is move on from there to Aurorintogensis. Now this is the first of our ancestors believed to have walked upright or bipedally, so that means walking on two legs. Now, obviously it wouldn't be very comfortable straight away, there's just minor modifications being made to the body to enable it, but this meant that they're much better adapted to live in other areas other than a forest. They can go out into grasslands and stand above the grass, see what's going on basically. It's a massive advantage and a big step forward and it obviously started us on the path to walking on two legs. So if you look at this tree here you'll see that there's plenty of little green blocks all the way down. Now these green blocks represent a massive step forward for us as human beings I guess, uh, well in the past anyway. So like I said this one here was a started to stand up right, that was roughly seven to six million years ago, so quite a long time ago. Then we're going to jump forward to about four million years ago where we start to get the, the um, Australopithecus era and uh, that's when you start to, we start to get more comfortable walking upright and our brain actually got a bit bigger so it, back then it was roughly the same size as a modern day chimpanzee. So not that big but still it started to get bigger, we started to become more and more involved and actually Lucy who is a Australopithecus afarensis uh, was discovered I think it was about 40, 50 years ago now. And um, Lucy is about 3.2 million years old. Um, and it was a massive, massive step forward in our understanding of human evolution. Because before then, we actually thought that, they, that um, humans, well, human ancestors weren't able to walk upright until just a couple of million years ago. But with Lucy, we found that there was actually very obvious signs that she was bipedal. And that was all the way over there, so millions and millions of years ago, well 3.2 million years ago, and as we start to find more and more fossils, we started to get a much deeper understanding, but Lucy is very famous, she's actually even commemorated by Google, as the day, uh, I think it's the day that she was found. So that again is a massive step forward for us. We also started to develop slightly dif different teeth, um, with small canines coming through, because obviously back then, we were more like chimpanzees. So that meant eating mainly herbs and stuff and maybe a few insects as well. So you didn't really need canines. But this is the point at which our canines started to come through. You started to get more and more developed, which obviously means we started to eat meat, um, turning into omnivores. Now this is obviously gonna be a natural requirement for their diet. They start to build up a need on, these, on this meat because trying to stay that active off just plants is quite difficult to do, especially back then. So this is another massive step forward in terms of our evolution. So next we move about 1.5 million years further forward and we get to Homo habilis. Now this is obviously very strange because that's where you first see the Homo just like Homo sapiens, so basically cousins really. But this is a really important stage because our brain started to get bigger, you start to get better brain developments. Now there could be a few reasons for this, it could just be natural evolution. But as well as this, we noticed that Homo habilis started to favour meat rich diets because they so, have so much energy in them as well. So that meant that they were able to develop better, more efficiently and it obviously also favoured bigger brains, which meant they were maybe, maybe able to understand more. Now this is also roughly the start of the Stone Age. It's a long, long time ago. We've been using tools for a very long time. Now, the main way they would start using these tools is they'd take pebbles and rocks and split them in half to get nice, sharp edges. 
That way they could cut through meat and cut it up nice and smoothly, making it much easier to deal with. Now, as well as this, like I said, bigger brains, but we also had a slight change in the face shape, starting to become more recognizable as human, I guess. So this was a massive, massive step forward. And as well as this, we started to get more nimble, dainty fingers and hands for all this precise work we were doing with our hands with these tools. So once again, very important, don't forget about Homo habilis. Next, by moving forward just a couple of hundred thousand years, nothing really, around 2 million years ago, 2 to 1.8 million years ago, we come to Homo, Homo erectus. Now Homo erectus is by far the biggest stage we've taken so far in our development. It was absolutely massive for multiple reasons. First of all, they were the first hunter-gatherer, true hunter-gatherer of our ancestors. Now this meant that they basically depended on both food sources to survive, so they would eat anything that came to hand. Now obviously they had all these tools to use as well and they were getting better and better with them as time goes on. But they were also the first of our ancestors to use fire, or the first documented to use fire anyway. Which means that they obviously learned how to create fire, which is pretty interesting and cool actually. I mean, imagine being the first person who discovered fire just be fascinating and scary and terrifying, all those things. As well as this, they started to travel out of Africa. So they started to go around all these different habitats. Started off in uh, Southwest Asia, then Eurasia, then Southeast Asia. So we started to travel all over the globe, spreading our wings as it were. Now, as you start to leave the uh, equator, obviously the concentration of UVB starts to get lower and lower. Now this started to cause a big problem for Homo erectus because they weren't able to create enough vitamin D, which obviously is essential for life because pretty much every part of our body needs vitamin D to develop and grow. Now if you don't have enough vitamin D, you start to get weaker immune systems, uh, weaker bones, slower brain function, all of that stuff, and that's not ideal, obviously. Now, to counteract this, over the period of roughly 10 to 20,000 years, they started to lose their melanin pigmentation in their skin, so they started to become slightly more light-skinned, um, and that way they were able to absorb more of the UVB rays at those uh, climates that didn't get as much uh, as many of the rays as on the equator. So the further up north you go, the lighter their skin was starting to get over the course of many, many generations. Now obviously if they'd rapidly all come back down then they would have been exposed to more of the rays, which leads to uh, skin cancer, age, faster aging of the skin, all that kind of stuff. So it is purely just to uh, make sure they can survive in their certain habitats because there's a massive array of habitats on Earth and that was purely advantageous for them at the time. So sticking with Homo erectus for a little bit longer, that's when they also started to get even bigger brains, which obviously helps as they were able to develop more complex tools as well as be better at hunting and just remembering stuff in general, something I seem to struggle with at the moment anyway. Now as well as that, they started to develop longer legs. Now these helped with migrating as they could walk further distances faster, as well as being better for hunting because they could actually move faster as well. So they were much more efficient at hunting and all that sort of things. Um, it's just a big step forward, Homo erectus basically, and we have to be very thankful for them that they didn't mess it up really. Now if we go to about 1.3 million years ago, we come to our last common ancestor with the Neanderthals, which is Homo antecessor. Now there's not, there used to be thought that it was Homo heidelbergensis that was the last common ancestor, but that's been moved forward a little bit, we're not actually part of that, which is why we branch off just here. Um, but Homo antecessor, much bigger brain, slightly more delicate fingers, starting to look a lot like humans as we know them today. And then like I said, we move forward and here we branch off into three. So we go off by ourselves over here. We developed about 0.3 million years ago. Not that long at all really, is it? Whereas these two were a little bit before us, just a bit ahead of the game. But they started to populate um, Europe, Eurasia, Asia, all those sorts of places, whereas we came up from Africa. So we're all from different areas of the globe. And then we swept up because we were just much better adapted at doing basically everything, if I'm honest. So as we started to develop about 300,000 years ago, so did Homo neanderthalensis or Neanderthals. 
they came from Homo Heidelbergensis, and we were in direct competition with them, well not at first obviously because we came from Africa, whereas those guys were mainly in Europe. But as we started to move out, obviously we started to come into contact with them, and it wasn't all out warfare like some people think. We did actually get on for a little bit, but we were just better adapted and we managed to survive. There was obviously going to be a little bit of fighting, but there are actually instances where um, anthropologists think that there might have been some funky business between the two species. Who knows? But once we come around, basically that's when the records start to tumble. So we started to get things like, we started to speak uh, about 150,000. Those are first like forms of communications, verbal communication anyway. There's a long distance trade coming in about 140,000. Jewelry, even rituals such as burying dead and having rituals to do with that, which could be seen as the first indication of religion. So all of these start to come away as humans are developing, building up to basically, basically a crescendo about 5,000 years ago when we moved into the Bronze Age. So we finally moved past stone. It took a long, long time, about 2.6 million years, but we finally managed to move past stone to bronze and from then on, it's just plain sailing, obviously, and we get to where we are now, which we, I guess we could call the technological age. But that is the history, well, of a human evolution going back eight million years ago. Now, hopefully you guys have learned something from this video. Uh, I actually learned a lot doing it, even though I had to study a lot of this stuff at uni anyway. <laughs> but hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If there's anything else you want me to cover, let me know and I'll get onto that soon. And uh, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, all of that stuff as well. Hopefully I'll see you guys again soon.